follow and thank you for watching this video about the software architecture and the availability quality attribute. In today's video, I, Ibrahima, will help you better understand. Simply put, what is the definition of software architecture? The link to the video where I go into greater detail is provided in the video's description. It is the blueprint of a program or application. It specifies the system's parts, how they connect, and the design principles that underpin the whole. It is important to know how a software system will work, run, and be maintained in order to understand its overall structure and design. One of these characteristics is availability. Availability is a quality attribute that describes how well a piece of software can serve its users when they need it. This is very important in many situations, such as e-commerce, healthcare, banking, and emergency services, where failure or downtime can have very bad effects. There are many things that can make a software system inaccessible, such as hardware and software problems, network problems, power outages, and natural disasters. The SLA, or Service Level Agreement, specifies the minimum levels of availability expected from the service. An SLA is a contract between a service provider and a customer that says how the service will be provided information about the service's quality, its availability, and the roles played by the service provider and the customer are all topics typically covered in the SLA. Service level agreements are usually talked about in the context of information technology services, but they can also be used for customer service, logistics, and even maintenance. The goal of an SLA is to make it easier for the customer and the service provider to talk to each other. It does this by laying out the standards for the service and the metrics that can be used to measure success. The document explains the system's uptime, reliability, and response time, along with other metrics, to make sure that everyone's needs and expectations are met. The SLA should be made with input from everyone involved. Understanding the system's capacity and performance needs is crucial for designing for availability. Think about how much work will be done, how much you'll need to add on and how many errors there will be. Designing for availability includes picking the right hardware and software so the system can keep its SLA. So, how do we make sure that the architecture of our software is built with availability in mind? Increasing a software system's availability can be accomplished in a number of ways. Redundancy is the practice of making multiple copies of an item so that it can be used in the event of a failure. Load balancing is the process of dividing a system's work between its different resources to make the system more efficient and less likely to fail. Failures can be handled by designing components to recover without affecting the whole system. Engineers use high availability techniques, which include special hardware and software, to make sure the system is always available. Having a strategy in place for bouncing back from catastrophic setbacks is known as disaster recovery. However, designing for availability isn't without its drawbacks. It is common to increase both the resources needed and the complexity of a system in order to make it more available. In subsequent videos, I'll cover additional use cases, approaches, methods, and design standards. Let's look at some real-world examples to see how these techniques perform in practice. Here we'll imagine a client making a load balance call to service in order to guarantee high availability. We can run multiple copies of this service behind the scenes, and the user will never notice any difference. There is a registry that lists the instances of the service and their current status. The service registry is checked by the load balancer to make sure that requests from users are sent to a live instance of the service. When an instance crashes, a new instance is created and the registry is changed to remove references to the instance that crash and add references to the new instance. The load balancer's routing rules can be changed this way, making sure that all users have a smooth service experience. This diagram is pretty simple, but it helps explain ideas like load balancing and high availability. However, the same principles can be applied to the different layers of an information technology solution all the way down to the component level, as shown in the previous example. Netflix's Chaos Monkey is an example of this architecture in action. It is used to randomly shut down production instances to test whether or not the services being built are resilient to instance failures. Lastly, it's safe to say that software architects shouldn't forget about the availability quality attribute by using strategies like redundancy, load balancing, fault tolerance, and high availability, we can make software systems more available and less likely to go down. But the trade-offs must be carefully thought through before the best strategies for the system can be chosen. Thank you for watching. I hope this helped you better understand the availability quality attribute. Don't hesitate to comment or ask any questions in the comments section below.